of the distinct yes. pleasure of welcoming you here to Burien, center of the known world. I want to thank also our uh, elected officials that are here today. I'm going to read a list of all the officials that, are, that I know of here today and uh, ask you to give them a, a round of applause once I'm done with the list. Congressman Jim McDermott, uh, Burien Council Members Bob Edgar, Nancy Tosta, Jerry Robison, Stephen Armstrong, former Burien Mayors Joan McGilton and Sally Nelson, Auburn City Council and Raya 9 Co-Chair Bill Peloza, Covington City Council and Raya 9 Co-Chair Marla Moon, SeaTac City Council Member Catherine Campbell, King Conservation District Board of Supervisors Bill Knudsen, King County Council Member Dave Uppergrove, and State Senator Sharon Nelson. Let's hope welcome. It's been just shy of a year since the groundbreaking uh, last September, and it's really remarkable what's been accomplished. There have been big challenges and small along the way. Cedars Park opened to the public on August 25th, and our community has been delighted. You can see still a little work is going on. We've still got planting work to go on the upper beach and in some of the wetland areas. But in just a short time, I expect this portion, the northern portion of the of the project area to look a lot like the south part portion that was completed just a few years ago. I also want to thank our uh, neighbors, uh, the friends of Sears Park and their neighbors in the Hurstwood neighborhood who endured construction noise and other impacts associated with the park being closed for this project for a whole year. A big thanks to the Army Corps staff who really delivered a wonderful project. Uh, Colonel Buck, obviously, also Leah Wickstrom, our project manager, Dan Roper, the construction manager, Larry Mellop, and the construction inspector. Let's recognize them. You can see from the A board sign here, there's a lot of um, consultants and other uh, contractors that were part of this team. They all deserve our thanks. Uh, the prime contractor was CKY Incorporated. Three names have been given to me, Howard Wittenberg, Noah Rivera, and Scott Stewart. So let's recognize them. And also our wonderful Burien City staff, uh, Steve Romer, who is there in the blue shirt. Um, he deserves a round of applause just himself. Our city project manager uh, and uh, all-around good guy. Michael Lafreniere, our Parks Director, who's uh, been with the city since 2005 and came on board just as the South Park was wrapping up. He's been working with our state and federal representatives to marshal support. And then Chip Davis and David Johansson from our planning department uh, who helped with uh, quick permit reviews and approvals on this project. Seahurst is really the place where the city vision becomes a reality. The city vision is a vibrant and creative community where residents embrace diversity, celebrate arts and culture, promote vitality, and treasure the environment. And that's really where this comes to pass, is that that vision become, uh, becomes a reality here today. Today marks the culmination of a process that actually began all the way back in 2002 with the Seahurst Master Plan, with community input, public hearings, studies, and engineering design work. You know, as a fairly new city manager, I'm lucky enough that I get to show up at the finish line. Uh, I get to claim no credit, but really uh, uh, thank the people that have brought this uh, to fruition. The real credit to, goes to those who showed the vision, marshaled the resources, and managed the details to recreate this wonderful, wonderful place. So I want to turn it over now to our Deputy Mayor, Bob Edgar, who will uh, offer you a few remarks. Bob is a longtime Boeing employee and brief period resident, now serving his third year on the city council and as our deputy mayor. Bob is especially known for his longtime advocacy for environmental values. Bob, come on up. Hello. On behalf of Union Mayor, Mr. Krakowiak, the Union City Council, and the residents of Union, welcome to the grand reopening of the Seahorse Park Shoreline Restoration Project. Today, today we 
celebrate the culmination of over 10 years of transforming almost a mile of Puget Sound shoreline back to its natural condition. A special thank you to the many uh, partners and stakeholders that you heard City Manager Carroll um, mention. But I want to stipulate that over the years, the city has been pursued an unwavering commitment to restore the marine ecosystem for juvenile salmon. And this, in turn, has provided a natural beach setting that we can share with our South Sound neighbors. Along the way, the Seahurst Park South Shore restoration efforts were recognized in 2010 <laughs> by the American Shore and Beach Preservation Association with a national award for the best restored beach. In 2014, FutureEyes presented both the city in the Water Resource Inventory Area 9, or Raya 9, the Livingwood Community Award for Excellence in Protecting Natural Resource Areas, and for inspiring commitment to restoring the remaining 2,800 feet of natural shoreline, improving the marine habitat for juvenile salmon, restoring recreational features, and improving recreational access to Puget Sound. These recognitions were the result of joint effort and commitment of stakeholders and partners who all have a keen interest in salmon habitat restoration. Again, thank you for joining us in this ceremony. I invite you to visit Seahurst Beach often, to take a lazy stroll along its wave-washed beaches, to meander on its upland trails, or just to relax on a piece of driftwood and watch the sun slowly set behind the mountains. Thank you. down to Burien, we have a lump, number of fine restaurants up there uh, in a variety of different locations, which we can tell you about as well. Now, I'll uh, ask our, uh, introduce our keynote speaker, Congressman Jim McDermott, the U.S. Representative, is now serving in his 13th term for Washington's 7th Congressional District. It includes a, a town to the north that I'm, I've heard of called Seattle, as well as Burien, and uh, parts of several other neighboring communities. Congressman McDermott is a senior member of the House Ways and Means Committee. During his time in con Congress, he has worked hard to aid society's most vulnerable populations, foster children, low-income families and individuals, unemployed Americans, and those confronting major illness and disabilities. Throughout his career, Jim has been a fierce advocate for the interests and issues of the greater Seattle area. Flying back to Seattle from Washington, D.C. nearly every weekend, Jim remains deeply involved in the community and maintains close connections with the people he represents. Jim resides in Seattle and has two grown children, three grandchildren. If he's not hosting or attending meetings uh, in our area, there's a good chance he's reading, painting, or walking around Green Lake, and hopefully walking along Seahurst Park from time to time as well. Congressman, please join us. As a congressman, you very seldom, well, every once in a while, you get a chance to see something that you were there at the beginning, and you're actually there when it gets done. And this is a really exciting day for me. I believe people ought to have access to the water and we ought to protect it and make it as uh, ecologically sound as it is good for recreation. So this project was a, was a work of love from the very beginning. And I want to thank uh, Cameron and Dave and all the people who have worked on it through all these years. One of the things about our society right now in this 24-7 world where everybody wants things to happen right now, it's important to realize that projects like this take a while. They take persistent city councilmen and planners and people at the Corps of Engineers and everybody else 
Uh, when you got the first um, earmark, that's a bad word in Russia these days. But I want you to look around. This is an earmark. Anytime you hear somebody say a bad thing about an earmark, think about the sea first restoration project. Because the 600 and some odd thousand in that first one in 2003 was where it all, that was the federal government's part of the start. Others have put in money. And this has been a real combined effort from a lot of people. And so it's really good to see everybody here celebrating this. Now, I think you have to give credit to, this is like everything, uh, a good idea or a good project has many fathers and mothers. Uh, there's, nobody takes any of the credit, all the credit for something like this. And the, Senator Murray's going to speak in a minute. I'm here. The Corps of Ed Engineers is here. The Bureau Council. All the folks deserve to give yourself a hand for what you're looking at. So please, give us a little hand. Now, it not only makes no sense to your hand and your hair, but it does good things to your papers, too. A friend of mine who got me really down in Valdez was Georgette Valley. And Georgette brought me down and she said, See that bunch of rocks there? We gotta get rid of that and make that nice park. So sometimes it takes one person talking to the right person. And I want to get Georgette, although I don't see her, I looked around through the audience. She's not here today, but she is one of those people. There's a lot of credit for what you're looking at here today. Now, we've got 3,000 feet of land here, sea, wall, sea land. And if you think about the Puget Sound, where else in the Seattle area, either north or south, in spite of, you know, people say, well, why are you worrying about it? I mean, it's not bad out there. We go out there, we don't have any problem. Nobody had a vision, or some people had a vision for this, and they made their vision come true. But I think that that's the real issue in a civil society, that people who have vision and then go after it and stick to it and make things happen that benefit everybody in the society. As I was flying in last night, I was, the planes were landing from the south. And so as we came over here, I could see the sun setting, uh, or the, the last of the sun setting, over the Olympics. And I thought, God, that part's going to be And the only thing about how many people are going to come out here for a moment of solace, a moment of restoring their soul, to sit out here and just enjoy the beauty of this place. Uh, we've had the hottest, the longest summer in history, maybe a while before we have this kind of sunshine again. But uh, enjoy it while you can. And uh, my, my hat is off to everyone. I think uh, sometimes we think, well, this project is too small. It's not a big deal. But it is a big deal. There are going to be thousands of people who come and park in that parking lot up there and come down here and have their kids walking out in low tide and picking up little creatures out of the water. All kinds of things are going to happen out here that will be good in the long run for our society. So thank you for all of you who put your hearts and your efforts into making this happen. Have a, have a happy day. Senator Patty Murray serves on several key Senate committees, such as appropriations, and she chairs the Senate Budget Committee. She's known for her ability to get things done, even when the odds are stacked against progress. A self-proclaimed mom in tennis shoes, Senator Murray keeps in touch with her roots as an educator and a lifelong Washingtonian. She prepared a few audio remarks for us here today. 
so much for inviting me to be a part of your celebration today. What a great day. I want to thank your city manager, Cameron Grawl, and city staff, Colonel Buck from the Army Corps of Engineers and his staff, as well as the many others who have worked so hard on this project. I want to recognize Congressman McDermott and State Senator Nelson. And I want to congratulate this entire community for coming together, making this a priority, and getting it done. This project is a clear winner for Burien, for our state, and for the region. Seahurst Park is one of the city's most important assets, and by restoring the shoreline and enhancing public access to the beach, this project is good for the economy and good for local families. The removal of shoreline armoring restores salmon habitat as an important part of salmon recovery efforts, and this project moves us toward that goal. I know all of you understand how important a sustainable salmon population is for our region and state. It's a part of our historic, cultural, and recreational identity, and a critical piece of our regional economy. And of course, recovering salmon populations will help fulfill tribal treaty obligations and help us meet Federal Endangered Species Act requirements. So congratulations on this ribbon cutting today. There's a whole lot for this community to be proud of. I'm especially proud of the strong partnerships between the city, great organizations including the Puget Sound Partnership, and many others, the state and the federal government. The $4 million of Army Corps support wasn't originally included in the President's budget. But when the community comes together around a clear priority like this, it helps me go back to Washington, D.C. to fight for the federal investment projects like these depend on. And I'm so proud that we were able to make the case for this critical investment, secure the Army Corps funding, and get this project over the finish line. So thank you again for inviting me to be a part of this celebration today, and congratulations to all of you for taking this important step forward for Burien and for Washington State. Today, on behalf of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, we have Seattle District Commander Colonel John Buck. As District Commander, he oversees military construction in Washington, Idaho, Montana, and Oregon. He also manages an extensive civil works engineering and construction mission in uh, Washington, Idaho, and Montana. His programs include historic preservation, hazardous toxic and radioactive waste cleanup, the Seattle District manages over a half a billion dollars worth of work annually with a workforce of about 900 employees. He's a West Point graduate who served on a variety of operational and combat deployments as well as command and staff assignments, including a stint in the Seattle District where we worked on phase one of this project. Please welcome Colonel Buck. Thank you, Manager Drawl. Deputy Mayor Egger, Congressman McDermott, Director Lisa Handy, State Senator Nelson, Director Cottingham, Mr. Osterman, media and council members, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be here with you today, and what a beautiful day to, to dedicate this part. Phase one was completed back in 2005, and now we've completed phase two. And, uh, you know, I can, I can uh, appreciate the manager's remarks earlier about showing up here at the finish line, uh, having com taken command only uh, 60 days ago. Uh, you know, I got here just in time. Uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's great to be back. Uh, you know, between the two projects, it's been a really a collective journey uh, with the Corps, the City of Burien, along with state and other federal partners uh, like the Puget Sound Partnership and the EPA. For more than a century, Puget Sound and the surrounding areas have been altered in a way that's degraded their their abilities to function as productive habitats for fish and wildlife. But working hand in hand on projects here like Seahurst Park, we're providing solutions to address those ecosystem problems. Today, the city of Burien's strong partnership and the strong support of other stakeholders, such as Ryan 9, Washington Congressional Delegation, King County Cons 
Conservation District and the Salmon Recovery Funding Board has resulted in a flagship restoration project among the portfolio of efforts the Corps is pursuing throughout the Puget Sound. Cirrus is one of the most important assets of the City of Erie, as well as for the Corps of Engineers, and it's a flagship project for our Puget Sound recovery. In fact, we started nearly every VIP visit uh, that the Corps has had here at Seahurst Park, including the Chief of Engineers and the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works, all started right here. It makes me especially proud. Uh, when I was initially assigned to the district back in 2001, as a young officer standing on the south end of the beach doing the original scoping for what I would call phase one, uh, or the south beach. Uh, and it was great to, a few years later to see the outcome of that. Uh, as, as pictures, as I was in Afghanistan, uh, having pictures emailed to me, and you see a, what was once Rock Gabians became a beautiful Pacific Northwest beach. And it's, uh, it was incredible to see uh, the progress that's continued on. This location illustrates what has been done and what more can be done. Walking along this beautifully restored beach allows everyone to gain appreciation for Puget Sound, and yet Seahurst Park is just the beginning and there's more challenges ahead. Puget Sound recovery is one of the Seattle District's highest priorities. This is a result of interactions and ongoing work with tribal partners, peer federal agencies, and leaders, and the state's Puget Sound partnership. It, you know, as I previously mentioned, I was part of the district in the past and saw firsthand the work of our civilian employees, and many who were born and raised here, and others who have become part of the community, and put those they help make these projects really possible and all the hard work and dedication that truly goes into it. And coming back as the commander for the Seattle District, seeing like projects like Seahurst Park come to fruition have reinforced those initial impressions. And my predecessor provided insights on how one of the eight Council on Environmental Quality Estuaries of National Significance, Puget Sound holds a place of national prominence. This prominence was reinforced in April 2014 federal budget release characterized Puget Sound as one of five priority ecosystems for the Corps of Engineers restoration efforts. While I and the Seattle District will continue diligently to work on these efforts, it's apparent that no one is waiting on just the federal government. The Corps is merely one tool in a kit of, of assets to include local state leaders and governments as well as tribal leaders. And quite frankly, rightfully so. We have, process, we have policies, we have processes uh, that we must follow. But I assure you, the Seattle District is committed to working with the community to do our part to contribute to the expertise and knowledge of our engineers, our biologists, our regulatory specialists, working side by side with the full mosaic of stakeholders. It's our hope that today's efforts will help improve Puget Sound restoration trajectory and help carry the torch forward on this long-term regional national priority as we continue to build strong in the Pacific Northwest. Thank you. Next speaker is Shada Sahandi. Shada was appointed by Governor Jody Inslee in January to lead the Puget Sound Partnership, a state agency that leads and coordinates our Puget Sound recovery efforts. Sound, uh, Partnerships Puget Sound's Acquisition and Restoration Fund program was an essential part of making Phase 2 of this restoration project a reality. Before stepping into the role of Executive Director, she has spent eight years as the City of Bellevue's Assistant City Manager, where she led strategic initiatives and was responsible for creating the city's first environmental stewardship initiative. Shada. towards a shared vision and our job is to help keep that vision vital and to get energy and resources directed to high priority projects like this one to get the job done and when I'm at an event like this 
I think not only of the people who are here, who put all those hours in, people like Joan McGilton, who has dedicated years and years of, of time planning and championing efforts like this, but also people who aren't here right now. All the folks at Burien City Hall, all the folks at the Army Corps of Engineers. We have Colonel Buck here that I think I've seen and heard of maybe three rounds of colonels who have come and gone. Colonel White, Colonel Estoc, four, four former colonels. And I think of all these people who, on whose shoulders we stand and I sort of picture them all as, as I ask you to think about this ribbon being held by all these different people who've had a hand and have joined arms. And, and think of them holding this ribbon. And as I, as I think of these people, think of how far this ribbon would extend down the beach. We've heard of Waira 9, that's 17 jurisdictions, the ecosystem forum. The Puget Sound Recovery Council that represents the watersheds, the tribes, the state and the federal government. These are folks who get together and rank projects, who have to look past their own needs and their own communities and think about the benefits of the larger communities, which is hard to do when you have limited resources locally, but they do it because they realize the importance to the greater ecosystem of Puget Sound and Puget Sound recovery. Think of those people all lined up behind me holding this ribbon. I think of the legislators who are not here. Senator Nelson is here and I thank her very much for her efforts in getting getting our funding lined up and supporting these efforts, but there are many, many other legislators and their staff. All the late nights during session, long session coming up, hopefully they will also continue to support the funding during the session coming up. And then I also think of the beneficiaries of all that work. The children of today who we see playing here, the children of tomorrow who are going to be enjoying this speech and coming and playing as Congressman McDermott said on these beaches. My own children, I have a six and nine year old son and they, at low tide, they can spend hours digging through the coast. And I'll tell you, it makes me a lot happier to see them doing that than sitting in front of a screen. And then just because I'm a little goofy, I think of the flippers and fins set coming out of the water and also holding that ribbon. So when the fish return because of all the hundreds of feet of habitat we've opened up for them. The salmon and the trout and the char, the chinook, the bull trout, the steelhead, and their little fish food, the, the surf smelt in the Pacific lands. I see them holding little bits of that ribbon. And then when the fish come back, so do the shorebirds. So imagine at the other end of the ribbon we've got, because we probably don't want them next to each other because they would eat each other, the bald eagles, the osprey, the great blue heron. And then when the fish and the bird return and you've made a really nice place for the critters and you've made a beautiful place for the children, then it's the people returning too. And so what you've done is that integrated investment that we're all after these days where an, a dollar of investment has made benefit for everybody and the critters and the environment, which is what we are all about. And then when you think, wow, that's a hell of a ribbon cutting. That's a hell of a ribbon. It's a hell of a project that's happened here, and that's a hell of a partnership. So I am incredibly proud of this thing that we've all done here, and I hope that it is one of many that we can all celebrate together. Thank you. Senator Sharon Nelson was elected to the state senate in 2010 representing the 34th district, which includes part of Burien, North Highland, Vashon, Murray Islands, and West Seattle. She previously served as a state representative, elected in 2007. She was selected as a leader of the Senate Democrats by her peers in 2013. As the founding president of Preserve Our Islands, for two terms as state representative, Senator Nelson was a leader in the environmental fight to successfully prevent gravel mining on Murray Island in 2010. She was also Chief of Staff for then King County Council Member Dow Constantine, where she worked on a broad range of public policy issues, including complex land use le legislation. Early last year, she visited Seacoast Park to learn more about this project and returned to the legislature 
where she personally helped advocate for its support. Please welcome State Senator Sharon Bell. Thank you so much for being here today. A year ago, we used our shovels and we started the project. And there were beautiful pictures, but those pictures didn't capture what I saw today when I arrived. This is an incredible achievement for all the partners, but particularly for the city of Burien. I got to know Joan McGilton and Rose Clark almost 17 years ago, when I was fighting to save a mile of shoreline on Maury Island. And we joined hands in so many ways with the city of Burien. And then now there's Seahurst and its beauty as a natural environment, a natural ecosystem. The city of Burien should be proud that what they have created here with all the partnerships is really a template to save Puget Sound because it will take one mile, a half a mile, a quarter of a mile here and there to ensure that all the fish and the seabirds and the orcas have a home for the future. I look at this as truly a model for the state of Washington, one that we can use in the legislature to get more funding to save habitat in Shoreline. It'll be simple. I can say, just go to the 34th district. We have the project. We can show you what it takes. We can show you what a vision and hope means. Because a project like this is all about people who have a vision, who have hope and determination. And I have to say, there's one person I do want to call out again, Joan McGilton because when there were project problems, she was the one who was at my door, and then at my door. Okay, I'll say it one more time, and then at my door. <laughs> and ultimately, things would get resolved, because I have to say, you can't say no to Joan McGilton. This was her heart and soul. This is a place that generations will love and value, and is a place that all of us should say, is reflection of what we can do to save Puget Sound. Thank you all for being here today. Before I introduce our next speaker, Kayleen Cunningham, I also want to recognize Lynn Ty from our uh, Congressman Adam Smith's office. We appreciate the Congressman's support on this as well. Kayleen Cunningham was appointed to lead the State Recreation and Conservation Office in 2007. During her career, she has worked for four governors and the elected Public Lands Commissioner in a variety of management and, and advisor positions. She got her start in Olympia, uh, serving as legal counsel for several Senate, State Senate committees. She practiced law and provided strategic advice on natural resource and land use issues for many years. Thank you very much for joining us. perspective sitting down there. It's pretty awesome looking this way, looking at the kids, looking at you, you're all nice and all that, but uh, <laughs> I'd like to be back there. Uh, my primary, my agency's primary involvement in this project is as the checkbook, or as one of the checkbooks. And uh, I just thought that I would give you a little sense as to how often we touch these projects. We touch these projects about five different ways. We touch them when you apply to us for money. We touch them when you, you come before us and we review them to make sure they're good and sound and a uh, good bang for the buck. We touch the projects again when we decide to fund them. And then we touch them when we come out like we did last September or August with the uh, shovel to get them started. But my favorite time to touch them is at the ribbon cutting because it really is awesome to see the transformation of this beach from the hardened cement seawall that was here to something that just invites you in. And of course it invites the shellfish and the salmon and all the other species in as well, but it really is my favorite time to touch them. And what I'd like to do, and I'll do it quickly, uh, I'd like to leave three messages with you. The first one is these kinds of projects take incredible leadership, courage, and vision. And so I think that it is really worthy of our acknowledgement of how hard your city people worked, your elected officials, 
the legislators, everyone who had a vision and then were committed to seeing it through. And it took a lot of perseverance and a lot of time and commitment. Uh, it just is incredible, but it takes leadership and vision to get these projects done. The second thing is it takes a lot of money. It takes money from a variety of funding sources and a variety of different kinds of money. And I think you all have to acknowledge and thank every legislator, every congressional member who was willing to put money in the budget for these kind of projects. These would not get done without their uh, commitment. And then the last message I'd like to leave you with is this is just one of many projects that have to happen throughout Puget Sound in order to recover Puget Sound and to recover salmon. So we'd like to use you as an example, but we'd also like you to help us, all the other communities around the Sound, to do stuff just like this. So thank you very much. I'm here on behalf of the Salmon Recovery Funding Board and the Recreation and Conservation Funding Board, both of whom have provided somewhere near $6 million in all of the various phases for this project. So thank you very much. Thanks. I'm also told that Tommy Bauer with Senator Campwell's office is also here, so thank you. Please pass along our thanks to the Senator for her support. Our last speaker is Doug Osterman. Doug is the watershed coordinator for the Green Duwamish and Central, Central Puget Sound Watershed, Raya 9, the best Raya of them all. <laughs> a position that he has held for 16 years. Actually, Doug and I go way back. We were colleagues together, and I used to call him every afternoon, and I sort of worked for Doug in generating the 1994 King County Comprehensive Plan, I think. He works under contract with 16 different cities and King County to provide them with regional watershed management services and a focus on Chinook salmon recovery. Doug's team assisted Burien with the technical policy and funding strategies to restore marine shoreline here in Seahurst Park. He also serves as a council member for the city of Harmony Park. Just last Welcome, Doug. Thank you, Cameron. I'm going to get rid of my script because everything I wrote down has been said by my predecessor. <laughs> To which I'm really proud. I know I've done my job as a watershed coordinator when a multitude of elected officials and administrators with the federal government, the state government, and the local government can all talk watershed and fish and restoration and Puget Sound at a level of detail and sophistication about how we all fit together and we're all in it together. I really feel like I've done my job. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I have been the watershed coordinator uh, for 16 years for this watershed. So I do love this watershed and I think this is a fantastic watershed. It is a 650 square mile watershed that has its origination in the uh, deep mountains of the Cascades at Stampede Pass at the formation of the Green River which flows a hundred miles or thereabouts to Elliott Bay of the city of Seattle and it continues down the coastline from Seattle all the way to Federal Way and it includes the islands behind us, the incredible Vashon and Maury Islands. I am representing the riot today so I want to acknowledge uh, the leadership of the riot who's here today, co-chair Marla Moon, city council member of the city of Covington. And the other co-chair, council member Phil Pelosa from the city of Auburn. And I also want to point out that uh, at the table working with folks like my leadership team, uh, Phil and Marla, are the Army Corps of Engineers as represented on the floor of the Watershed Ecosystem Forum. Council member Dave Up the Grove from King County sits at the table and works together. And there's a multitude of other cities, 17 cities in particular, and a multitude of their elected officials and other administrators who sit down together to develop the vision for this watershed and how it can recover salmon and meet multiple benefits of the communities while doing that, like what has manifested itself here at the beach at Burien. Uh, 
um, with this amazing project. And I think that perspective of 16 years, I've seen it all. I've seen, I've seen a lot of people come and go. Um, and it does take a long time. It, uh, when we got the project done in the Duwamish River called Site 1 Duwamish, it became known as um, North Winds Weir. That project was 18 years in the making before it was finalized. And it, a lot of it is coordination, get everybody on board, get the community on board, and get the local area and the people that live around these projects on board. And I really am a believer that you have to do that on a watershed basis, like we've done on the Green Duwamish and the Central Puget Sound watershed. That said, what I want to, I really want to emphasize is it along the way, there's always been leaders who have stepped up to the plate, like Bill and Marla today as co-chairs of the forum, to really forge the way and do the hard work and the study and the traveling across the countryside, um, knocking on the doors to make these projects happen, show up at hundreds of meetings, review hundreds of documents, put up with me, um, but I have to point out who I feel on this particular project, as well as the advancement of the Puget Sound Action Agenda at a local, by a local government elected official, was Mayor Joan McGilton. I have to I'm sure Sharon will tell you that, along with Joan knocking at the door, I usually was held at by my back of my neck by Joan when I was at that door, wasn't I? So Joan and I slept across the countryside, not only to do what was necessary to build the bridges necessary to build this project, but she was there for Puget Sound everywhere she needed to go. She participated on the Puget Sound Salmon Recovery Council. She attended many meetings of the Leadership Council, the Ecosystem Coordination Board. She was on the cutting edge of developing legislation and for funding that are based on watershed ecosystem values. And at every turn, she was where she needed to be. I made a lot of trips in her hot little red Honda to Edmonds, to Yakima, to Ellensburg, to Olympia, and many other places. And this is the first time in all these years that I've actually had the opportunity in public to thank Joan for what you've done for Puget Sound, for the watershed, for your community. You were tireless, you were dogged, you were persistent, and you had that vision that they talked about today. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Joan. this off. <laughs> Nine weeks out from a knee replacement, so I'm very, very pleased to be here. And all of you who have put this together, the hundreds and hundreds of organizations, the nonprofits, the individuals, the agencies, the governor's office, the uh, senators Cantwell and Murray who got us funding, Colonel Estock who promised me this project would happen. It's just an amazing opportunity. But what I'd like to comment on is this park will not only be used by Burien residents, but it's a part of the Highline School District programming, the Environmental Science Center nonprofit impacts about 12,000 kids a year, primarily low income, who come to the beach and has classroom uh, experiences. They go to Normandy Park and cut open salmon and then Joe Weiss with his teenage kids. He supports five high schools 
that do marine tech engineering and science. And Joe has been a fixture at this beach for longer than I've been down here. So it's the future that is so exciting to me and the opportunities now that the big yellow things are gone. And now Joe and the Environmental Science Center will just do remarkable things. So keep aware of the future opportunities and it is for the kids. We'll be here for however many years to enjoy the beach. But just remember, it's for the kids. Thank you all for coming. I'm so happy to see you. Well, that uh, wraps up our speakers here today. As we bring the program to a close, I'd like to ask our speakers and elected officials to gather um, behind the ribbon there so we can get a picture first and then they